Hello and welcome to South Asian. We are almost at the end of 2018 and almost about to welcome 2019 in. This is a brilliant time of the year where we need a lot of music to heal all the wounds. Tonight in our studios, we have three brilliant musicians. To my right, I have Frederick Bajer in piano, George Cook in cello, and Samia Mahboob Ahmed, who's a Hindustani vocalist. So thank you all for being here with us tonight. Uh, Fred and George have actually come from the West, from London, and they traveled all the way to India, if I'm not mistaken, to Varanasi, and uh, for classical music, I believe. Mm. So you are now training with someone in Varanasi? I'm actually training in Kolkata. In Kolkata. I'm training with a wonderful Sarangi player, mm -hmm. Ustad Sarva Hussain, who is the grandson of a wonderful Sarangi player, Latif, Abdul Latif Khan. And I'm learning a great deal. Yeah. And uh, he's just accompanying you? No, is he Freddie is a, is a wonderful soloist in his own right. On this trip, we're playing, uh, we're playing a sonata for cello, where the piano features as an equal partner to the cello. So um, even as Western musicians, you know, our music is a, is a symbol of the balancing of two agents. Yeah. Excellent. And Samia. So you live in Delhi, married to a Bangladeshi who's basically heading World Bank in Delhi, mm -hmm. and you practice uh, North Indian classical music, mainly. And if I'm not mistaken, you also have a PhD in sociology. That's right. So was it a change of heart, or what was it that basically brought you to music? Music was always in my heart. Um, so was academia. So uh, my life has been about, you know, carrying on with both, along with my family. Uh, obligations and all along I was training in the Guru Shishya Parampara, the master apprenticeship tradition with my gurus Sri Tapun Buddha from Bangladesh and um, Padushri Vidushi Sumitra Guha of the Kirana Gharana in India. Um, so once I got my degree, um, the doctoral degree, came the big question, you know, do I continue with um, the academia, um, you know, teaching or research, or try the music part? Excellent, so you chose music. <laughs> yeah. All right. On to you now. Why uh, did you travel to India and for, uh, from, uh, and, and why are you really, really pursuing Indian classical music? Well, I knew that it was an extremely rich um, expression of Indian culture as a whole the culture of the subcontinent as a whole. And I knew that I would learn a lot culturally, but of course also grow as a musician. And that's what's been happening. Yeah, it's a very s gradual, lifelong process, but I've, I've begun it. Excellent. So, tonight, uh, would you be willing to play anything for us? Oh, I'd love calm to. calm our souls and, oh. and then we'll all be probably enjoying yes. to our heart's content. I'd like to play a piece by Mendelssohn a German 19th century composer. We're going to play the first movement of his second sonata in D major. It's a wonderful, energetic piece. And you'll hear the virtuosic piano accompaniment. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Let me turn to uh, Samia. So, was there anything that you saw faintly even resembling uh, North Indian classical music? I think um, we've been talking about a composition of um, a bhajan. Mm -hmm. um, Mahatma Gandhiji's favorite bhajan, Vaishnava Janatu, set to Rakhambaj. So, um, I hope we'll have some time to um, present it together so that this vibrant, this joyous sound can be also replicated in that bhajan. Excellent. So yeah. we look forward to that fusion bhajan. In the meantime, would you want to play a typically North Indian classical piece for us? Yes, I'd love to. And uh, given uh, that this is evening, um, I'd like to present a very short piece. Uh, we won't have time to go into a full khayal, but a bandish of a khayal in Rag Sham Kalyan. Excellent.
Shadhu, Kup Shundar, very, very, very nice actually. Um, on that note, I think we should go for a short break right now. Be right back after the break. Welcome back from the break and now it's time for some conversation. So Frederick, when you started to uh, team up with George uh, and, and when you heard that he was actually getting into um, Hindustani music, what were your initial feelings? Did you support it? Were you I, I, apprehensive? Oh, it's not my business to support it or not, but I, I thought it was a great idea, actually. Why did you think it was a great uh, idea? Because uh, I think in Indian music, the way that Indian musicians look, uh, think about music is more about... Uh, the, the music rather than the instrument, you know, and I think a lot of people probably reacted with saying, you know, how can you play Indian music on the cello? It's not an Indian instrument. And I think George has really proven that it, you can absolutely do that. And I kind of suspected that was the case, but yes, absolutely supported, although it's not my business to say so. So it's the spirit and not <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yes, instrument. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So you basically can play anything uh, as long as you have it in your heart. Yeah, I mean, and the medium can be anything. You know, you can only play two or maybe three notes at the same time on the cello. So you can't play anything necessarily that could play on the piano, but you can play certainly an, an Indian melody and do all the inflections that Indian musicians do. And uh, I think the results are really interesting. Yeah. And have you ever uh, played Indian music in the piano by yourself? Uh, no, this is the first time. The first time. Excellent. And it's an experiment, but I hope it works well. <laughs> Excellent. So, George, what do you think about Bollywood music? Bollywood music? Well, I mean, such energy and sense of celebration. Of course, Bollywood music often involves a lot of people. I think that, you know, represents the fact that, you know, music does, music brings people together. And I think Bollywood shows that. I mean, it, you know, you have huge huge groups of people making music together. And it also, you know, music is so integral to Bollywood, it represents the fact that, you know, music is integral to the culture as a whole. It's actually multiple genres. So I think there's, uh, it offers music for everyone. Do you think there's a, there's a conflict between the two at any point, between, between the pure and the fusion? When you're working what you call fusion is to know your own subject, but also to be mindful of, um, uh, of preserving the integrity of each strain of music. That's when the real fusion can happen. Otherwise, it just becomes like forcing sounds together, and it, I feel it doesn't work. So you, you, one must try and learn about the other and preserve the integrity. So while we hear Samia speaking about music um, as a platform where everything converges, what is music to you actually? It's, it's a form of self-expression and it's um, whatever the writer of the music intends it to be, it's always a very honest expression of that, that writer's worldview. So our interesting position as Western classical musicians is we rediscover these historical personalities through their music and have to really make peace and sympathize with what they're expressing through their music. You know, they are expressing a worldview and by interpreting, interpreting their music, we are, we're making peace with that. Um, so you know, music, music expresses a culture, it expresses a philosophy, it expresses everything. It does that very powerfully, yeah. Do you think 
that the subcontinent can come together through music um, and, and that um, this divide can be bridged. Absolutely. I think, I think musicians, when, where there's music, people converge, no matter um, how, you know, what the politics say. The politics can divide, like you say. But musicians actually uh, transcend uh, the politics, the language, the religion, uh, ethnicity, um, uh, you know, everything. But, uh, everything. D does that mean, Samia, uh, that every border should probably have a set of musicians? That would be <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, that's, that was a very <laughs> creative proposition. But anyway, um, you were mentioning uh, that you wanted to sing something in, in Bangla before we started, I mean, sure. behind the scenes. Okay. Would you want to attempt that? Sure. If Just maybe four lines or four so. Four lines. Maybe you'd like to explain uh, the, the meaning of the right. song to them. Um, uh, it is a song from the rebel poet of Bengal, Kazi Nazrul Islam, and the song is, it's a devotional piece, it's a, it's a devotion through music, that's what it says, Anjali Lahumor, so I'll just sing four lines of it. Lovely. Thank you for singing that for us, uh, Samia. Now, I would like to turn to you, George, for your experience. I mean, since you were in India and now you're in Bangladesh, how has your subcontinental journey been so far? Well, um, it's been a journey of, of a culture that I recognize because of so much that it shares with the Western music I know, but also a journey of discovery, as, as Freddie mentioned. Indian music, sub, the music of the subcontinent, Bangladesh, Pakistan, is, is indivisible from the spiritual aspect. The riyaz, the practice, is a form of meditation, is a form of spirituality. And perhaps in the West, in our maybe more secular society, we've lost that sense of spirituality a little bit. Music's become a little divorced from that, that feeling. And it's, it's been very interesting and very fulfilling to, to find musicians who for whom music is so much more than a vocation and a, a, a skill, a professional practice. It's really a spiritual, spiritual way of life. Um, and so to learn the music has been far more than a kind of methodological, technical study. It has really been a, a I've realized that, you know, it's this very slow process, process of absorbing a culture. You know, it's not, it's not about kind of rational information, it's about just absorbing the way of being and, and, and doing things. And so, following the Guru Shisha Parampara model, I've been welcomed very lovingly into my teacher's family. And I've slowly begun to absorb his culture and the, his way of making music. So it's a very, very long process that I've begun, um, but a very fulfilling one. Well, I was actually very impressed 
that you actually managed to say Guru Shishya Parampara without fumbling. Oh, thank you. I've been practicing <laughs> very hard. Excellent. Uh, so, Samia, what about your journey as a South Asian? Because you've lived in different places. What about um, sharing with us what you've so far experienced in your South Asian journey as a, as a musician? My Guru Shishya Parampara began right here in Bangladesh, in my home country. Then, you know, the travels began. Um, eventually, I traveled to India. And when I returned from India back to Washington, D.C., I was worried. There were all this immersion, what, what, how will I, you know, what will I do with the music? But uh, I was delighted to see that there was a great, uh, it was a vibrant, um, you know, acceptance of the classical music, of the South Asian music, including classical music, in, well, I'm, I'm in the area I live in, in the DC, DC metro areas. And, but what was more powerful was that it was not confined within the South Asian community, that even outside the community, I, I was able to get the state um, of Maryland support because they, were, they support the global arts. And they have a program called the Maryland Traditions where they recognize global arts and, and I was able to uh, get into their grants program and they, they call it the Maryland Masters who receive the grants. So, so through the state of Maryland and the county I live in, where I also was on their panel, I was able to actually reach out to not only the South Asian community but beyond. So um, I will say that I've been lucky when I'm able to practice fully and performing and teaching in the area. Great. So thank you all for, for being here tonight. And uh, since I'd like to leave the audience with uh, your fusion piece of the bhajan, um, I think it's best for me to say goodbye now so that the audience can actually enjoy pure music when, I, uh, when the program ends. So thank you all. And South Asians, thank you for watching the episode. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. But in the meantime, let's leave on a very, very happy note. Let 2019 be a wonderful year for all of you, where music will continue to bridge all the divide. And we'll all come together in a fresh spirit of musically being together. वजन तो तेने कहिए जे वैष्णव जन तो तेने कहिए जे पीर पराई जाने रे वैष्णव जन तो
ਵੈਸ਼ਨਵ ਜਨ ਤੋ ਤੇ 